So, how do we make a bill of materials from a multi-body part? I have a multi-body part, you can see. Here are all my parts. Um, and I have an exploded view as well. So, that's what you can see. Uh, close that down. Right, so I'm going to head over to a drawing. Just to see how this works. Okay, I'm going to drop this isometric exploded view in here. Um, okay, I kind of don't really like this view, so I'm going to change the view. Um, there we go. That's better. Right, so if I try and make a bit of materials from this item as it stands, I'll get a single column, a single row, sorry, I say, four columns. And I can, if I want to, I can go and change this. I can double click on each of these columns or one of these columns and I can change part number to custom property and that'll allow me to it should allow me to actually change <clears throat> these items right so let's say if I wanted to just take that out so and then I can add more more rows and more columns by right and then right clicking and saying insert row below etc etc uh, but there's a there's a better way of doing this um, it's definitely going to be quicker and let's go back to the the actual item um, and I want to show you how to use weldments so weldments are quite interesting items but I won't show you how to use the real item right now but just if I use a weld the weldment command I'll get a cut list and then I can use the cut list to make my um, bill of materials from so if you want to find weldments, it's under the weldments uh, tab, which if you right click, you should be able to go to weldments over here. Or if you type weldments in in your search bar, you'll find it as well. So I'm going to click on weldment. And what you'll notice straight away is that the weldment, um, I'm not sure what this is, command, um, occupies the space just under origin and then the cut list gets changed to a set of um, folders and under each folder you'll have the part that you've actually put in. I've renamed each of these parts to to correspond to what I want them to be. I'm going to I'm going to open all of these just so that you can see what they're called and then um, what we can do from here is right click in the first cut list item folder and say properties click on properties and then you'll get uh, this cutlass summary in which you can change the properties and the the values and then you'll see a, a, a corresponding um, value being put into the, the the end column that's the column that's going to appear in your um, bill of materials so at the moment i've got material and there's nothing specified and i've got quantity which is one because that's how many there are in in here so let's first add some materials in here just to see what happens so if you go one down from the folder and you right click you can add a material so this is these are going to be um, abs so i'm going to do that with each of these it takes a little while um the motor will have will have a whole lot of uh, materials but i'm just going to call it uh i don't know this one Molly. that'll be a sub assembly of course and then this one will be abs as will the last of the casings and then here under the this one here um i can just oh seems like the first one won't do it let's see material um so this one will be some sort of steel it's like, let's call it alloy steel it's gonna it should change yes so what it's going to do then is going to put two of these into their own cut list and the third one um i do know how to change it i just can't remember it's not important because um the reason why this one here won't give me a material is because it was created in a file which predates 2015 so the the properties have not been carried across um but just assume that they have been, you know, um, and I'll perhaps deal with that in another video. So I've got all my materials. Let's go back to this item and say properties. Click on properties. And you'll see that the, the ABS value has been 
inserted. If I click on each of these catalyst items, it'll correspondingly click uh, select the, the item in the uh, design tree. So that's that one. So let's go back to the first one and then um, you'll see material quantity. Don't worry about the order of these. Um, SolidWorks sorts it out. So you don't have to worry about this one being corresponding with anything. Um, and then I'm going to type description or select description. And here I can copy my um, name from from the actual name that I see. So I'm going to do that with all of these. I'm just going to select description. Uh, this is pre, uh, pre populated it in this case, rear cover. Okay, so this bit's important. Um, as I said before, don't worry about the property name sequence. And you'll see for this first M3 by 10, 18, 188 Phillips, um, self threading screw there's no there's only quantity there's no material so if i type in this column and i select material it'll update but then i need to select in this uh, value column or row and also select material and then because nothing's specified it, it won't do it but if i go to the second one and i do the same thing because i have specified it in this one you should get an update. Let's see. Yeah, there we are. I had alloy steel. So let's go back to this one. I'm going to select description and then call this M3. I'm just going to say M3 screw for now. And then we'll do the same on this one. Ah, it seems to have already pre-populated it. All right, so that's your full list. You can just check the, the summary, the next column. You can see what it's going to do. Those are, those are the values I'm going to get. And then the cutlass table will give you an idea of what you're going to get. So you're going to get seven items instead of six. And the description and then the length should be where the materials will be. But we will do that inside the actual drawing. So I'm going to say OK for now. And then hop across to that drawing. Uh, I think it's this one here. OK, so now before you put in um, the cutlass or the bill of materials, we want to balloon this item, but don't use the auto balloon that that doesn't work or it does, but it'll only give you one. So I'm going to try and balloon this according to what I remember the sequence is. It's not going to copy exactly. I mean, I, I can't remember that sequence. So I've got number one in there. And what you want to do now is not do anything else other than select the text item under balloon text and change the value to two and then select which item you want to be number two. I think it was left casing, which would be this one here. I can't remember. And then each time you want to add a new balloon, just type in the next number um, and then click on where you want your balloon to be. So I think, pretty sure I got this wrong. Five will be the motor and then six will be these screws. So there should only be six items here. Um, as I said, I, this is because I'm using an old file. So typically yours would, yours should update properly. So I say, okay. And then I select the view and I go to the tables column and I say weldment cut list. And you should get this warning message, which says, do you want to insert a cut list based on the the um, balloons you've put in place, say yes. And then you just follow the defaults here. So you say, okay, SolidWorks will take a little while to figure this out and it'll drop this item in. So you can see here that I've got uh, seven items. I should have six. So I just have to go fix that one item there as far as its custom properties go. And then in the length column, I want to change that to materials. So this is very simple. You select the actual column and you'll see that the, in the properties bar on the left hand side, you have a number of possibilities. If you go to um, cut, cut list item property and select material, this, this should update according to the materials you filled in in your drawing, in your actual um, model. Okay, so one or two other things. If you want to change like where these, um, where the text appears, you click on the text button um, and then you just say 
you want it to appear on the left hand side and you can actually give it a sort of a, a padding so let's say i want the the text to appear a little bit away from the side let's type in a three there you, you can add, you can change the padding although it, as far as i can see sometimes you will not be able to enter a figure in here now oh, that seems to have done it um, but if you can't enter a figure you can just use these arrows to increase the the padding so you can see that that's doing something to the padding. Um, let's just change this one. Right, and then I can do the same here. Right. Okay, so there we go. That's your bill of materials. So I, I still need to change the item numbers to correspond with the balloons. Um, maybe one easy way of doing this is just to change the size of the balloon so I see, can see what's happening. So I'm going to say Control A, and that'll select all my balloons. Um, if I've got no, no other dimensions added yet. And I'm going to go to more properties and I'm going to say we don't want to use the document font and just increase the font to something a lot larger. Say OK. All right, so that just makes it more visible. And then you can just drag this BOM so it is closer to the items. And then you'll have to do this one by one. Um, unless you get the sequence right in the beginning. So number five is the right casing, but in fact, it, in mine, it's the motor. So I'm gonna make that, uh, what is number? So that would be three actually. Three is the right casing. And then left casing would be, it seems like it's two. So you can change these independently of one another. And then number five is the motor. So then you can proceed with the uh, front, top, and side view to the left of this, but you've got your bill of materials sorted out. Thanks for watching.